Hello, this is Paul from Foresight Tech. In this video, I will prove theorem 4.1.1, which is the basic properties of vectors in general vector space. Uh, these properties are obvious in Euclidean space, but in, it's not so obvious in a general vector space or real vector space. So first, you need to make sure this result uh, is in general vector space. Okay, we have to use the axon to prove. So let's look at A. Uh, zero times a vector equals zero vector. So first, let's look at A. Uh, we go through this way. Uh, zero U is a vector, okay? We define it by scalar multiplication plus zero U, okay? This is the addition, we should get a vector. That's a, uh, zero plus zero times u. That's true, right? This is the distributive, okay? Uh, uh, action number eight. Distributive property, okay, the action. Zero plus zero, of course, that's number, okay, so that's zero times u. So here the first step, and then almost, so now if we take this, if we cancel this, but how do you cancel this? If we cancel this, we should get a zero times u equals zero vector, right? But how to do this? Uh, let me show, we can use the actions. So first, we can do this. We can add uh, inverse of u. Okay, to the equation, to the bio equation. So first, the uh, inverse of u exists. Okay. This is a uh, inverse of a zero u, and this exists definitely. Okay, because of the axiom uh, number five, right? So axiom number five, the existence. Of uh, universe of any vectors, so I add this to the equation. See, what do we get? Uh, we will get the zero u plus zero u plus the inverse of the zero times u equals zero u plus the inverse of the zero times u. Okay, that's true, right? Okay, and then we can associate. Okay. Associated this axiom, uh, so axiom number three. Okay, so axiom number three. Associative, and then this should be equal zero, right? So this should be zero. Okay. Zero vector, and also this the same should be zero vector. Uh, that's what. That's the axiom. So the axiom five. The definition of the inverse, okay. a vector plus the inverse equals zero vector. So we can get a simple now. The left is zero u plus zero. The right is a zero vector. Okay. So this, uh, I said, is the axiom number five. Inverse. Okay. Again, we use. Um. See. And the last. This step. And this should be good to what? This should be good to zero times u because uh, zero vector. Okay? So that's identity of addition, right? So identity of addition. So therefore, the left is zero u, the right is zero. And uh, this is the axiom uh, number four. Okay, identity, right? X number four. I identity of uh, addition because zero plus any vector is the original uh, vector itself so the left side equals zero times u see the right side equals zero what do we get we get a zero times any vector so finally equals zero right that's true okay so a is true and the b is similar with a very similar i leave uh, 
uh, B to you to prove. Okay. So A is true. And the B here, uh, similar proof. Okay. That's A. Okay. You can follow it's similar as A. I'll leave it for you. <clears throat> so now look at the C. Uh, negative one times a uh, vector equals the inverse vector. Okay, so C Y. This is a two. It's not a difficult to prove. C. Uh, the inverse no negative one times a uh, vector. The size equal the inverse vector. Okay, Y. Hmm. So we only need to use the definition. What is the inverse? Okay, inverse means a vector plus another vector equals back or back to zero. So one is the inverse of another. Okay. So we have to verify it. We just verify uh u plus inverse uh no negative one times u. If this equals zero, and therefore negative one times u should be the inverse of u, right? So is this zero? Yes. Because I can factor, I can factor u out or use the distributor. Okay, see, I can do this. Okay. Here is a one. Uh, here is a negative one. And then here's u. One times u equals u because the one is identity. Okay. So I factor the u out or this distributor. This, uh, mm, this action. Number seven, okay. This trip it up. So therefore, what do we get? Uh, we get a zero times u, right? The zero times u equals zero. Back there, we just approved that and the uh, eight. Yeah. So therefore, by the definition, see. Uh, so this one should be the inverse, right? So now, by definition. What is the definition of the inverse? Okay. Is a plus a vector that equals back to zero, so this is the inverse of one. Therefore, uh, negative one times u should be the inverse of u. Okay, so this is inverse. Okay, and that is the inverse. So that's two, and then one more d. Uh, scalar number times the vector equals zero vector, and then this either k equals zero, scalar zero, or u equals a, a zero vector. Um, this is similar like a, a zero product, okay, zero product for the number four. So let's see why this is true. This is true, okay, in general vector space. D. Uh, let's see. If uh, k times u equals zero vector, okay, then all right. So the first case, uh, k equals zero. The first case, k equals zero is true, right? k equals zero. This is correct because uh, k times u equals zero times u equals zero. That's good, right? So here is A, we just approved it. So this is good. So K probably be zero is possible. And then case two. What if K is not a zero, not a scalar zero? Okay, in this case, um, therefore, see, U should be I times one over K, one out of K both sides of the equation, then this should be equal to 1 over k times 0, right? Okay, so we times that, uh, we just over, okay, you simply say it's divided by k both sides, or we times the inverse of k both sides, that therefore 1 times u is, a, is a u, because 1 is the identity. And therefore, I solve for u, u should be this, and then the same, uh, we just prove that this equals 0. Okay, uh, this should be B, right? So you can see B. I'll leave this proof for you. Any scale number times zero vector equals zero. 
So that's a B. So here is a B. Yeah, therefore, it's also true. Uh, which is the second case. Uh, if uh, K, therefore, the result is if either K equals 0 or either U equals 0. Okay, so therefore, and the theorem, uh, the part of D we prove. So that's the, all the theorem. Thank you.